Okay, I want to answer postpartum questions. Your most searched, top thought of questions you have after delivering a baby. My name is Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. I think these videos are so interesting because there's so many different experiences and we're all doing the same exact thing but it all turns out so differently. What does labor feel like? To me, it felt like a super intense period cramp, right? Your period times 100. But I like the fact that it comes and goes so you're not in constant pain. You have that moment to take a breath, think about what the hell is going on, and then it comes and it creeps and it just gets so strong. It's sliced and diced in your stomach. So to me, that's what labor felt like. But I think at the end, when I was eight centimeters dilated, I don't know, it didn't hurt. It kind of was like a really big poop that I wanted to make. <laughs> okay, going to the bathroom. You have to go to the bathroom to pee. And I thought that was like, I just got my vagina sewed. It sounds so simple, but it yet is so terrifying. If you don't go to the bathroom, they put a catheter in you. I had three stitches. They give you a little bottle to squeeze water in, and then they give you some ointment to help with hemorrhoids and pads and stuff. So I just made sure I kept my area down there very clean. I was bleeding, but I wasn't passing big clots. If you're passing a lot of clots and it's continuous, and that's a problem. I had planned that after the baby, I was so excited to go to my house and take a shower, but they didn't discharge me because of breastfeeding. So I ended up taking a shower there. I wish it wasn't in a hospital, but I felt good getting all that cleaned off of me. I bled also for a couple of weeks. You're six weeks postpartum, you go to the doctor and they talk about birth control. And I opted for an IUD, been on birth control normally, and I forget my pills, or I just didn't like the way it made me feel. To me, I noticed nothing differently than when I wasn't on an IUD. The easiest, like, peace of mind. Also, when you get an IUD, I'm sure the doctor will tell you, make sure you go in every year to have it checked because she told me that a lot of people just get it and they don't come back for like five years, so make sure you're on top of it because you just never know breastfeeding it's everything so new and different like you just had a baby now he's trying to like eat from your boob i'm a first time mom so this is something i've never been through before he was making the motion of doing it but he wasn't latching and i'm so confused i'm like is he on it is he getting in milk what's going on and then the nurses would come in and they would check and see if he's latching and he wasn't and i had him in this position in the football position and sideways and on the bed he wasn't getting it or i wasn't doing what i needed to do so then they switched me to pumping and i saw that i pumped crazy the first day my flow of milk is like great so they're like this is awesome like our problem is getting him to suck your boob you know so the nurse was coming in every day multiple times a day going over it with me and she's like he had the worst time ever he just was not getting it you can't try over 10 minutes because then they start losing calories you're stressing out the baby and he's just trying to eat and it becomes this whole thing so then they tried a nipple shield and he still wasn't he was chewing my boob he wasn't like sucking and latching that's why they did not discharge me from the hospital was because we were not getting the whole breastfeeding thing going on so yeah i was like really disappointed because everything's there everything's working except mouth to boob they were able to discharge me because they said keep pumping not forget about breastfeeding him right now but stick to pumping and feeding him your pump milk and then keep trying to breastfeed for a whole month we were practicing i was trying to like lay on the bed and have him eat that way i was using a pillow and i was trying to do all these things i one time freaked out and i started crying and i called my lactation nurse and i was like i need to come in I like it's he's a month already I feel like he's either gonna get it now or never I ran over to the doctor and of course he wasn't even in the mood to eat so he just laid there and he wouldn't even try so that whole thing was a waste and then I got on YouTube and I just searched my life away on like every single technique and position and what to do and I literally put him on my lap and I turned him so his head's facing my boob and that was my problem I didn't have him facing me and he latched he's been breastfed only since then if you have the milk flow and you have the want to do it do not give up and keep trying try every position try every technique what we love now is being fed laying down and i think that's my favorite way of breastfeeding because hands free he's not in a uncomfortable position with me holding him and we literally just lay there and he eats i'll go on my phone and just chill out it is sometimes difficult at night i wake up and then i go get him and i, I get back in the bed and then it's very easy for me to fall back asleep which is a big fear so i keep my light on and i 
keep myself occupied on my phone. Honestly, with pumping too, I have to pump multiple times a day and then I have to clean the parts. I was cleaning the parts so much that my hands were so dry and itchy. I just felt like my days were so consumed with pumping and cleaning my breast pump than it was like actually in feeding and enjoying him. And kudos to you moms who are pumping for your baby because that is honestly so much work. And for people who can't breastfeed, you know, and you are doing formula, that's fine. Like at the end of the day, as long as he's fed, we all have our own opinions on everything. What I'm going with and what I keep saying is if you can do it and your body can do it and you want to do it, do it. While I was breastfeeding, I was getting engorged very quickly. It gets a little bit painful. I would pump to get that feeling away. If your breasts are like engorged, it's kind of like an alarm clock for you to start feeding. And I've learned that now too, every time I'm engorged, it's usually when he's hungry. Pumping and feeding at the same time. So when I was strictly pumping, I pumped for a whole month. My freezer was stocked with milk. I just ran through my supply. I need to amp up my supply again. One hour after you're feeding to then start pumping. And you're also, the more you pump and the more you release milk from your boob, you're obviously creating more milk. It's supply and demand. If I'm feeding him right now just my boob strictly, I'm making enough milk for him that he needs. But now that I need more milk to carry through him when he's not with me, the more I pump, the more I'll produce. When I am pumping though, there are bras, I think, that have this like flap here that massages your milk duct. But if you don't have one of those bras, get a hands-free pumping bra and then massage your top boobs up here. And that helps the milk flow and that's what my doctor recommended me to do. Also, when breastfeeding, which side did he use? So he loved my right side boob and that's the boob he was accustomed to the most and he fed off of the most. But I also want my boobs to be producing the same amount of milk on each side so after we had locked down the right boob i started bringing in the left boob and now i honestly don't know which one he likes better sometimes it's tricky because when i feed him and he falls asleep it's hard for me to wake him back up and switch positions to the other boob so sometimes i just leave him on that one boob and then the next feeding i do the other boobs if he's up and eating i'll switch during the feeding so then i'm also keeping supply and demand of each boob another question is sex I definitely waited for my approval from my doctor, my six week appointment to have sex and it felt like I was a virgin and I it was so awkward and I feel like I didn't know what I was even doing and I felt like brand new. I think my body was like, whoa, what the, what is this? But once I relaxed, I was able to enjoy it and that's how the sex life was. I felt like I had to learn to have sex again, if that makes sense. What to eat when breastfeeding. So my doctor requested high fatty foods, but like good foods, so like nuts and cheeses and avocados. And so you're making sure you're getting in a lot of fat into your milk for the baby. Okay, so what I never knew is that breast milk is different in the morning than it is at night. So if you're breastfeeding, if you're pumping, make sure you put the time a.m. and p.m. I mean, I obviously dated my times with like the actual time, but morning breast milk is designed to wake the baby up while breastfeeding. And breast milk produced at night helps the baby fall asleep. So when I was pumping and I wasn't, he wasn't on my boob, I was just grabbing a random bag and warming it up and giving it to him. But if I would have known to separate him from morning and night and giving him his morning milk in the morning and his night milk at night, isn't that so cool? Like our bodies are so cool, I never knew. So yeah, if you're strictly breastfeeding or even if you are pumping and reserving and you're giving him to the daycare or somebody babysit him, make sure they also know to give him the right time of milk. So when you're feeding your baby, the first milk that comes out is more like a liquidy milk. And then when you're getting into what it's called like reserved milk, I think that's what it's called, it's your more fatty milk. You know, they talk about that gold milk. I pumped so much of that gold milk, I think I had about two to three weeks worth of gold milk. And you can tell in my fridge, this one side was all like yellow and then the other ones in the back was white. I made sure I got every drop of that gold milk that my body would supply and he had some even last week and he's almost four months old. I would pump my life away in the beginning. Okay. I also, with breastfeeding, diaper was changed. If he is like comfortable and he's still screaming, I honestly gave him the boo because he's hungry and he would eat. So I never limited him to like, he ate two hours ago, I'm not gonna feed him again. Or he just ate one hour ago, I'm not gonna feed him again. Whenever I felt like he was hungry and he was eating, I fed him. They will let you know when they're hungry again. And if they are, feed them again. That's another thing my doctor told me, like they wanna eat, let him eat. Postpartum depression. I've heard it comes at different stages, but right now he's four months and I have not felt any postpartum depression. There was one point where I had a lot going on. Right now I have my dogs living with me. They were at my parents' house. I live in a one bedroom apartment dealing with a baby on my own 
and having to bring in now two dogs and two older dogs at that so they're in their weight i for a moment was very overwhelmed and it was just a lot going on so i felt like i had to mentally get myself out of it what can i do every day step by step that can get me out of this rut that i'm in what can i do to make my day a little bit easier and once i started doing things a day to make my new life easier it became easier these are just little words of like hope and motivation so even if whatever is going on something that you're doing doesn't relate to what's affecting you but it makes you happier do it if if i take postpartum depression or you take any kind of depression or it's all mental if you're waking up trying to have a better positive day you're most likely going to have a better positive day is something going to probably happen in that day that isn't positive of course but if you wake up frustrated and oh my god and then your day is going to kind of start like oh my god you know so if you start your day with peace it should flow peacefully if you start your day aggressively and anxious you're probably going to have an anxious day that's really all i can say about postpartum depression because like i said i didn't really experience it my what i experienced was like wow like literally like wow in shock like I would put him in his bassinet and then I would go on my phone and look at every single photo that I've taken. Like a crazy person, like he's right there. Like I'm gonna have to wake up in two hours and feed him, but I also need to sit here and stare at all these photos that I took yesterday. It's just insane. Especially with this whole 2020 going on, I brought in light. Just being so thankful and so happy that I have something to love and give my whole life to. I've always lived my life selfishly. I've always lived my life for myself. Now this is a whole other world of living my life for somebody else. And it's very motivating and it's very, I wanna get stuff done, I wanna be a better person i want to get out of my old habits i want to do everything for him and i want my life to be a value for him now i feel like i have value to my life now i feel like i'm living for something that's just how i feel okay and then did motherhood come easy to me first month was just filled with a lot of people that it felt easier the minute that everybody went their separate ways my mom went back home it became just me i think is when i freaked out i'm like wait what i'm on my own like and I have to do this by myself like it's a whole human I don't know what to do I can read 20 books and still not know what to do it gets easier and then you learn their schedule and then you know what they want and then you know their body more and you know why they're crying and then it becomes just so natural and it's like you are their mom you are their need and if I fill my head up with am I doing this right am I doing this wrong and this person said to do this and this person said to do that and it just becomes so consuming and overwhelming that you lose your sense of motherhood because you're listening to everybody else and it's so funny because when I was breastfeeding I know know that he's getting enough I know what's going on my mom was like no no it's not working it's not working and then I was second-guessing myself and then I was like okay maybe it's not working maybe he isn't getting enough maybe this and he was he was getting enough I knew what I was doing I knew exactly what I was doing listen to your body because you are their mom your mom is not their mom your friend is not their mom you're their mom you know them more than anybody else you created that person take advice with a grain of salt you know how people do things how people you know treat their children or whatever listen to yourself okay so i think those are all of my questions that i had and things that i those are just things that i thought of and looked up like you know most frequent questions that people that people have when they after they give birth and i hope like i said this helps anybody with transitioning into your new mom life. You wanna say goodbye? You wanna say goodbye? Can you smile? We'll just end it with baby curry.